Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril Paint. Today we have a detailed guide showing you how to paint one of the fairest and beautiful maidens of Middle-earth, Arwen Undomiel. Tied to the fate of the ring, this model exudes radiance and majesty on the tabletop. Without further delay, please sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Start off by base coating Arwen's face and hands with Bugman's Glow. Elves are known for their impeccable features, so ensure to keep the flesh layers smooth to help portray their pristine, almost porcelain-like skin. Layer over with a mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. Once the wash is dry, relayer with the previous Buckman's Cadian mix, leaving the Agrax Earth Shade showing in the deepest recesses to create shadow. Elves have a slightly fairer complexion, so in order to show this we're going to be slightly adapting the usual way we paint faces. Apply an all over layer now with a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Pallid Witch Flesh. The introduction of Pallid Witch Flesh here, earlier than we usually do, will lift Arwen's complexion ever so slightly to better reflect her elvish features. Add more pallid witch flesh to the mix for the first highlight stage. Your mix should be an approximate 50-50 split of Cadian flesh tone and pallid witch flesh at this point. Areas to focus on here include the forehead, nose bridge, chin, cheekbones and separating out each fingers. Keep your highlights tight here to try and create a slight angular, almost sharp look to affect your features. You can also leave the lips showing the previous layer underneath to give her lips a slight ruby redness to them. Finally, add even more padded witch flesh to the mix for the final dot highlight. Focus this now on the upper and outermost areas of skin to best reflect where the light will be hitting across her skin. You can also now carefully dot highlight the knuckles as she grips her sword. Once this is done, you can carefully pick out her eyes using Abaddon Black and padded witch flesh. Base coat Arwen's hair with a mix of Rhinox Hide and Dryer Bark. Make sure you cover all of the hair cascading down her back as there's an awful lot of it, particularly to the sides and under the braids. Add a small amount of Gorthor Brown to the mix for the first layering stage. Once the wash is dry, re-layer over with the previous mix. 
Now you want to focus on separating out the larger areas of hair, leaving the Agrax shade showing in the deepest recesses. Add more Corthor Brown to the mix of the first highlight stage. Now take your time to start picking out individual hairs across Arwen's head and back. Keep your highlights tight and neat here to make the final highlight stage easier. With the braids down the back, carefully separate out each individual braid with a dot highlight which will define them nicely and help create a flow with the rest of the hair. Finally, apply a fine edge highlight across all the hair with Gawthor Brown. Focus now on the upper and outermost curls of hair, as well as the tips and the ends of the hair, and applying an extreme pinpoint highlight to the top of the braid. We want to create a regal, almost ethereal flowing tunic to best capture Arwen's majesty from the films. To achieve this, we're going to be using a variety of rich blue hues. Base coat the entirety of Arwen's tunic with a mix of Thousand Suns Blue and Macrag Blue. The Thousand Suns creates the ethereal look whilst the Macrag adds a degree of richness which will carry through the following layering and highlighting stages. Now we're going to add Arrow and Blue for the first all over layer. This is the natural progression from the Thousand Suns base paint and will further accentuate the majesty and regalness of Arwen's garb. Once the wash is dry, re-layer over again with the previous mix, being careful to leave the subtle purples and dark blue hues from the washes showing in the deepest recesses of material. There are some nice to find material folds sculpted across this model, so make sure to use this as a guide if you get stuck to keep the flow of the fabric looking natural.
Now we're moving on to the highlighting stages. For these subsequent few stages we added an increasing amount of Farahoth blue to the Thousand Suns, McCrag, Aram and Mix to lift the overall human tone. As you progress with each highlight stage, focus more and more on pushing the fabric towards the upper and outermost folds of material to create an authentic sense of flowing fabric. Baharoth blue is extremely light in tone so be sure to add this gradually to avoid any stark jumps in hue which would create too much contrast and end up looking unnatural. For the first highlight we had an approximate split of 25% Baharoth blue and 75% the original mixture and we gradually increase the concentration from there for each subsequent highlight. By the time you've reached your final highlight with this mixture you should have no more than approximately 50% of your mixture comprised of Baharoth blue. Once you're happy with the look of the tunic, apply an extreme hedge highlight with pure Baharoth blue just to the tips and uppermost crescent material. Keep a good point on your brush here and keep these extreme highlights as tight as possible to keep the look of the tunic looking natural. Remember, you can always add more paint, you can't take it away, so take your time here to make sure this is applied in the right areas and in the right concentration. Carefully pick out the ruffled cuffs poking out from the tunic sleeves with Rakarth flesh.
Once the wash is dry, layer over with a mix of Rakoff flesh and pallid witch flesh. Finally, apply an edge highlight to the cuffs with pallid witch flesh. Pick up the blade of Arwen's sword Hadhafang with Left Belcher. Once the wash is dry, apply an edge highlight with Rune Fang Steel. Paint Arwen's knee-high boots and very carefully pick out the hilt of Hadafang with dryer bark. Apply an edge highlight to all the levers as well as the hilt of Hadafang with Gorthor Brown. We opted for a nice rich purple colour for the inner robes as we thought this would complement the tone of the blue nicely and further reinforce the majesty that is Arwen Evenstar. Paint all the inner robes with phoenix and purple. Be careful here not to bleed out onto the finished blue of the tunic above. Layer over with a mix of Phoenix and Purple and Full Grim Pink. Again, as with the Barahoth Blue, Full Grim Pink is a very light colour so be careful to get your ratios right to avoid any stark contrast. Add more full green pink for the first highlight. Again, start to focus this on the upper and outermost areas of material to create natural flow, depth and shadow. Finally, apply a fine edge highlight of pure full grim pink to the outermost edges of cloth to finish up the inner robes. Carefully pick out Arwen's trousers with a mix of Skaven Black Dinge and Abaddon Black. Give these a quick highlight with pure Skaven Black Dinge.
there we have it, the beautiful Arwen and Domino ready to stand defiant in the face of evil that threatens to destroy Middle-earth. 